Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine, where we talk about mysteries, thrillers, and horror movies. My name is Vic Shy, and this week, my friends, I'll be going over the 1992 horror film Candyman. Because who doesn't love candy? And men. Tony Todd, to be exact, who brilliantly portrays the titular Candyman. The film tells the story of Helen Lyle, portrayed by Virginia Madsen, a graduate student doing research on the Candyman legend for a school project. It isn't long before Helen digs too deep and finds herself personally entangled in the legend and with Candyman himself. I'll be explaining the events that take place throughout the film, as well as the ending and what it means for the newest upcoming Candyman film. Before we begin, I want to give a big shout out to my good friend and fellow YouTuber, Zoe Crawford. Zoe has an amazing channel with great production design where he talks about the latest movie news to include comic book movies and horror movies. I highly recommend Zoe's content and I'll be putting a link to his channel in the description down below. But without further ado, sit back and relax and join me as we explore the legend of Candyman. Our movie begins with an immediate title sequence showing an overhead shot of 1990s Chicago and one of the most epic theme songs I've ever heard. We then see thousands of bees on screen and are treated to a narration by Candyman himself, Tony Todd, whose voice fits the role perfectly. He tells us that with his hook for her hand, he'll get you from your groin to your gullet. The loud scream of a woman can be heard off screen, and a large black cloud begins to form over the city, presumably a humongous swarm of bees. We then meet our main character, Helen Lyle, who is listening to a story about the Candyman legend. The story is of a girl named Clara, who while babysitting, invites her side piece, Billy, over. Instead of having sex like normal teenagers, they decide to play Candyman in the bathroom. The legend goes that if you say Candyman five times in front of a mirror, Candyman will appear and kill you using his hook that is locked in the stump of his son-off right hand. Clara and Billy look in the mirror, but Billy only says Candyman four times. He heads back downstairs and while alone in the bathroom, Clara says Candyman for the fifth time. She turns off the lights and Candyman suddenly appears behind her and kills her. Candyman apparently also killed the baby, probably because he was pissed that he was summoned while trying to binge watch Horror Mind videos. Billy survived the incident but went insane soon after. The Candyman legend is based on a short story called The Forbidden, written by Horror horror legend Clive Barker. Candyman combines two infamous real-life urban legends of Bloody Mary and Hook. We then meet Helen's best friend Bernadette, who just listened to the story from another kid's perspective. According to him, it was the babysitter who killed the baby, which shows how much a story can change when passed down from different individuals. Helen sits in on a lecture about urban legends from her husband Trevor. He describes urban legends as the unselfconscious reflection of the fears of urban society, which as we'll come to find out, fits the Candyman urban legend perfectly. Helen sees Trevor being a little too friendly towards one of his students named Stacy, but he assures her that nothing is going on. Helen meets a couple of custodians that tell her Candyman resides over at Cabrini Green, a public housing project on the north side of Chicago. They tell her of a woman named Ruthie Jean, who was possibly killed by Candyman. They say that Ruthie Jean heard a noise that sounded like someone was trying to break through the wall. She called 911, but the police didn't believe her, and no one came to help her. By the time the police finally arrived at the location, Ruthie Jean was murdered and mutilated. Both of the custodians seem to know that Candyman killed her, but one of them unconvincingly says that she doesn't know anything about that, sounding almost scared to even talk about it. While doing some more research, Helen finds that there has been a total of 26 murders in Cabrini Green, all in similar fashion as Ruthie Jean. The article states that the killer or killers of Ruthie Jean smashed their way through the back of a medicine cabinet in the apartment bathroom. Back at her apartment, Helen shows her findings to Bernadette. She tells her that the apartment she currently lives in was originally built as a housing project just like Cabrini Green. We see that the space behind her bathroom mirror is completely void of a wall and that the apartment is only separated by the medicine cabinets themselves. See, there's no wall there. It's only a medicine chest separating us from the other apartment. This explains how the mystery serial killer was able to make his way into Ruthie Jean's apartment. They then get the bright idea to start chanting Candyman in front of the mirror, although Helen is the only one to say it five times. You done fucked up now, Helen. In a fake out jump scare, Trevor jumps onto Helen in bed like a lion attacking its prey. Where have you been, Trevor? Grading essays? Or should I say, 
NSA, hmm? The next day, Helen and Bernadette are on their way to Cabrini Green and Bernie's packing all sorts of heat. Bernie is understandably worried about waltzing into the gang-infested Cabrini Green, but Helen talks her into it. She says that the entire Cabrini Green community attributes the daily horrors of their lives to Candyman, showing just how much of an impact the urban legend has made. It's amazing how much time they spent parked on the freeway without getting honked at or shot. The 90s were different times indeed. They make their way inside of a building and are harassed by some of the residents who think they're the police. Helen begins taking pictures inside of the building and comes across the quote, Sweets to the Sweets, which is a quote taken from William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Although the quote's relation to Candyman isn't truly revealed until the 1995 sequel, which dives more in depth into the origins of Candyman. They enter Ruthie Jean's old apartment and Helen notes that the layout is almost identical to hers. Bernadette doesn't seem comfortable with this entire thing, but Helen keeps going further in to investigate. Inside the bathroom, she crawls through the hole behind the mirror and into the other apartment. She climbs through yet another hole in the wall, which has the face of Candyman himself with his mouth wide open on the other side, giving us some really cool and ominous imagery. The painting of Candyman seems eerily lifelike, with his eyes set dead on Helen, standing across from him. She sees a pile of candies in front of her and finds a razor blade in one of the candy wrappers. There isn't any callback to this in the rest of the film, but this it seems to be a big plot point of the upcoming Candyman film. Local character, he walk around handing out candy to the neighborhood kids. One day, a couple of kids get razor blades in their candy. They meet a woman named Anne Marie who asks them what they're doing here. She seems suspicious of their intent, especially with Helen being a white woman. Candyman was released in September 1992, the same year that the LA riots took place. Racial tensions and mistrust in the police were at an all time high, which is reflected in this film. Anne Marie invites them into her apartment, and we see that she has a baby boy named Anthony. She says that Anthony is all she has and that they're not gonna get him. She tells him that she heard Ruthie Jean screaming through the walls the night of the murder. She says that she is afraid that one day Candyman will come through the walls and take Anthony. During a fancy schmancy dinner with her husband and his friend Purcell, he tells them the origin of the Candyman legend. He says that the legend first appeared in 1890. Candyman was the son of a slave who became rich by inventing a machine that mass produced shoes after the Civil War. Candyman was sent to all the best schools and became very well educated. Candyman had a natural talent for painting portraits and was hired by a wealthy landowner owner to do a painting of his young daughter. Candyman fell in love with the woman who became pregnant soon after. Her father became enraged by the revelation and exacted revenge on poor Candyman. The father hired a group of men who chased Candyman all the way to Cabrini Green. Where they proceeded to saw off his right hand with a rusty blade. They then stole several honeycombs from a nearby apiary and smothered honey all over his naked body. Candyman was stung to death by the bees, his body burned, and his ashes spread all over Cabrini Green. I absolutely love this scene and how they focused on Virginia Madsen's face the entire time. The echoes of Candyman screaming during the scene sounded extremely tragic, even though we didn't actually see anything. Purcell's laugh is also one of the most 90s thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Helen returns to Anne Marie's apartment and meets a little boy named Jake. She asks him if he knows anything about Ruthie Jean, but he says that he can't tell her anything or Candyman will get him. She then utilizes peer pressure into showing her where Candyman is. Unless you're too scared. He leads her to an outdoor bathroom and tells her that a young boy was brutally mutilated and murdered there. She walks alone into what is probably one of the jankiest bathrooms I've ever seen, and I could smell that bathroom through my screen like I was actually there. The phrase sweets to the sweet is seen written in what appears to be feces. She lifts up the toilet lid and sees thousands of bees inside the toilet bowl and quickly shuts it. Outside, an unknown figure walks up behind Jake and he looks up, saying Candyman. A man in a long black coat walks into the bathroom, a hook. The man, undoubtedly a gang member posing as Candyman, tells her, I hear you looking for Candyman, bitch. He then smacks her in the face with his hook and proceeds to beat the crap out of Helen. After the men leave, Jake walks into the bathroom and finds a bloodied and unconscious Helen lying on the floor. During a police lineup, several men are brought in and are told to say the line, We hear you looking for Candyman, bitch. We hear you looking for Candyman, bitch. 
This scene was absolutely hilarious to me for some reason. She identifies the man who assaulted her and is told by Detective Frank that the man ran a gang called the Overlords. He says that the man also killed Ruthie Jean and a young boy, but that they couldn't bring him in without a witness to testify. This explains why the residents of Cabrini Green were so afraid to speak of Candyman. The gang leader was posing as Candyman the entire time to instill fear in the residents, and that is who people were referring to as opposed to the legend of Candyman himself. Helen tells Jake that Candyman isn't real, but he is still afraid that Candyman will come for him. Sometime later, Helen meets up with Bernadette, who managed to save the pictures from Helen's smashed camera. While alone in the parking garage, Helen finally comes face to face with the real Candyman. Helen. Helen. He tells her that he was obligated to visit her because she doubted him and was not content with his stories. He tells her that he is the writing on the wall, the whispers in the classroom, and that he is nothing without those things. Because of this, he must now shed innocent blood. But what exactly does this mean? Candyman is an urban legend that has been passed down from generation to generation, which has kept his spirit alive. When the gang leader took over the Candyman name, he not only instilled fear in the residents of Cabrini Green, but kept the name and the legend of Candyman relevant. With the gang leader now locked up, and when Helen told Jake that Candyman isn't real, she essentially hurt Candyman's reputation and relevance throughout Cabrini Green. Candyman says that he must now shed innocent blood, and in doing so, instill fear in the people and staying relevant in the process. Be my victim. Helen wakes up covered in blood in the bathroom of Anne-Marie's apartment. In the hallway, she sees the decapitated head of Anne-Marie's dog with a cleaver right next to it. She hears Anne-Marie screaming in the other room and decides to pick up the cleaver. Inside of the bedroom, Anne-Marie is wailing over her son's crib that is covered in blood and he is nowhere to be found. Thinking Helen is responsible for all of this, she attacks her and throws her to the ground. Helen defends herself by slashing Anne-Marie's arm with the cleaver, and the police suddenly burst into the apartment and see Helen looking a little sus. Helen is arrested for attacking Anne-Marie and the possible abduction of Anthony. She tries to call home to Trevor, but doesn't get an answer as we see he isn't home. Helen is released from jail, and her lawyer says that she has not yet been charged with a crime. He says that the police are hoping to find Anthony's body and charge Helen with murder. She says that all she remembers is blacking out and waking up covered in blood in Anne-Marie's apartment. While taking a bath, she asks Trevor why he didn't pick up her phone call, and he says that he was deep asleep, which, as we know, is a bold-faced lie. She reviews the photo she took and notices Candyman standing right behind her in Ruthie Jean's bathroom mirror. She goes to look at her own bathroom mirror, and Candyman's hook suddenly bursts through the wall. He asks if she believes in him now, and tells her to Believe in me. Be my victim. He reveals that he is the one who abducted baby Anthony, and that if she doesn't willingly come with him, he will die in her place. Candyman says that her disbelief caused his loyal congregation, the residents of Cabrini Green, to lose faith in him. He says that her death will be a tale that will instill fear in the people for generations. Bernadette arrives at Helen's apartment with flowers, unaware of the horrors inside. Helen tries to warn her, but Bernadette walks into the apartment anyways. She comes face to face with Candyman, who seems extremely pissed at Bernadette it walked into the party uninvited. Bernie is viciously killed off screen, which sounds like it was a lot of work for old Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> He may want to work on that cardio. Trevor walks into the apartment and sees Helen on the kitchen floor holding a bloody knife. Helen is once again arrested, and we see the bloody aftermath of Candyman's visit as Bernadette's dead body lies on the floor, completely mutilated. Damn Candyman, say his name five times in the mirror and he won't kill you, but he sure as hell will frame you for murder and child abduction. Candyman speaks out to Helen and wonders why she wants to live. He considers himself to be immortal and a blessing to be spoken about and live on forever as an urban legend. Helen is taken to a psych hospital and strapped onto a bed. Candyman suddenly appears in front of her and asks Helen for a kiss. She begins to freak out, which causes the hospital staff to come in running and sedate her. We see little Anthony in Candyman's lair looking pretty comfortable given the circumstances, and he's even given some honey by Candyman, which was pretty sweet, no pun intended. Hey, I think that guy over there may want some of your honey, Candyman. Helen is taken to a psychiatrist named Dr. Burke, who tells her that she has been a patient there for over a month. Helen has been charged with 
with the murder of Bernadette and is currently being evaluated to see if she is mentally fit to stand trial. She decides to prove that she's not crazy by chanting Candyman's name five times in the mirror. Candyman suddenly appears and kills Dr. Burke and gives Helen a look like, There bitch, you happy? He frees Helen from her restraints before hilariously flying out the window. Helen climbs out of the window and makes her way to another room. It's no holds barred now. She knocks a nurse out cold and steals her clothes to blend in and escapes the hospital. She heads back to her apartment, which is being painted by Trevor's student, Stacy, and she realizes that Trevor has been cheating on her all along. A heartbroken Helen tells Trevor that he was all she had left before walking Walking out. Candyman once again speaks out to Helen and tells her that they will all abandon her. He says that the only thing she has left is his desire for her. This explains Candyman's plan all along. Instead of simply killing Helen, he framed her for the abduction of Anthony and the death of Bernadette in order to isolate her from everyone she loves. Candyman is attempting to drive Helen to the point where it is no longer worth living so that she can give herself over to him willingly. She heads back over to Ruthie Jean's apartment and makes her way over to the Candyman's layer through the hole behind the mirror. She arms herself with one of Candyman's hooks and climbs up to the floor above through a hole. All these holes in the walls make me feel like I'm playing Silent Hill series all over again. We see a mural on the wall depicting the events that led to the death of Candyman, previously known as Daniel Robitaille. Helen sees Candyman comfortably sleeping on a stone table and rudely stabs him with a hook. He begins to speak to her, which appears to place her in a trance. He tells her that if she surrenders to him, Anthony will not be harmed. He sweeps her off her feet and carries her to another stone table, and the scene that follows is absolutely epic. Candyman releases hundreds of bees that begin crawling all over Helen's body. Bees come out of his mouth and Helen passes out after Candyman kisses her. The look in his eyes during this scene is filled with pain, as if it pains him to do this to Helen. He then grabs baby Anthony and tells him that it's time for a new miracle. Helen wakes up without as much as a single bee sting. She picks up the hook off the ground and sees the mural depicting Candyman's death with the phrase, it was it was always you, Helen. It was always you. We see that the woman in the painting looks exactly like her and that Helen Lyle is possibly a reincarnation of Candyman's lover. This explains why he is so adamant on having her join him willingly as opposed to killing her like the rest of his victims. She hears baby Anthony crying outside which appears to be coming from inside the large pile of trash seen earlier. Helen attempts to make her way inside to save Anthony and wakes up Jake in the process. Jake only sees the hook that Helen was holding and believes that Candyman is inside the trash pile. Helen makes her way inside, unaware that there are now several people now about to light the pile on fire. They light the pile on fire with Helen and Anthony inside, and all of the residents of Cabrini Green are now outside to witness the burning of whom they believe to be Candyman. Candyman suddenly appears and grabs Helen. He wants the two to burn together so that they can never be separated again. Helen notices Anne-Marie looking outside and must act fast if she's going to save baby Anthony. She grabs a burning piece of wood and stabs Candyman in the stomach, forcing him to release her. She attempts to crawl out of the burning pile, but a large burning piece of wood falls right on top of her, engulfing her in flames. She manages to escape the flames and is quickly rescued by some of the residents. Anne-Marie is reunited with baby Anthony, and Helen is left severely burned for her brave efforts. Candyman shouts out at Helen to come back to him as he bursts into flames and explodes like he just got vanquished by the Charmed Ones. Vanquish this evil from, from time and space. Unfortunately, Helen did not survive her injuries and passed away as a result of her burns. All of the residents of Cabrini Green show up to her funeral to pay their respects and thank her for her heroic act that saved baby Anthony. Little Jake then pulls out a hook and tosses it into her grave. Back in the apartment, we see that Trevor is now living with Stacy. Trevor seems extremely saddened by Helen's death and possibly regrets all his actions prior to her death. He begins crying in the mirror and says Helen's name five times. He turns off the light and Helen's vengeful spirit appears behind him. What's the matter, Trevor? Scared of something? She stabs Trevor with a hook that Jake left for her and seems to be enjoying that sweet, sweet revenge. Stacy hears Trevor screams from inside the bathroom and in the film's final scene, finds his mutilated dead body inside of the bathtub as the movie ends. During the end credit scenes, we now see a mural of Helen engulfed in flames in Candyman's lair, showing that Helen's selfless actions and her story will go down as legend for the Cabrini Green community. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Candyman. 
My friends, I really enjoy this movie and I cannot wait to check out the newest film releasing this weekend. The upcoming Candyman film is going to be a direct sequel to this one, ignoring the previous two films in the franchise. That film story will focus on Anthony McCoy himself, who becomes entangled in the Candyman legend, years after the events of the original, which will be very interesting to see. But my friends, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for tuning in and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.